Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, what I want to do is I want to kind of present a new, uh, maybe a new solution for a, kind of a difficult or expensive problem. Uh, I started off this Tektronix power supply, who's actually made by GW Insect, and that thing is plus minus 20 volts, three amps on each output. So if you stack the two, you know, if I do plus minus 20 on a audio amplifier, you get 40 volts at 3 amps, so 120 watts is all I can get out of that. So I picked up this GW and that's when I realized that they made this one. And I did a video on that a while back, but anyway, this guy can do plus minus 30 instead of the plus minus 20, but still limited to 3 amps. So I can get 60 volts, you know, with them stacked on top of each other, 3 amps. 180 watts, so I went from 120 to 180 watts, plus I got the 30 volts, so that was nice. And when I turn it on, it actually goes 31.6. It's got a loud fan. Kind of wish the fan would only go on when it needed to be on, but same thing with that guy, the fan just kicks on. Well, then I got this uh, Kai Wheats. Actually, Kai Wheats reached out and, and asked me if I want to review that. They gave that to me that was super nice and I like it because it'll put out if you can see from there 10.5 amps and if I disconnect that it goes up to 32 volts so that's with the fine and the coarse maxed out so 10 amps at 32 volts so now I can get 300 watts on a single output that's pretty awesome but I want a plus minus 32 and I wish they made a you know, dual output power supply. Well, it is dual. It has 5 volt, 2 amp out as well. So does, you know, this guy's 5 volt, 3 amps. This guy's 0 to 6 at 2 or 3 amps, something like that. Well, actually, he goes up to 5 amps. So he'll put out 30 watts just on this guy. So, you know, I don't really use those 5 volt outputs. I wish they went up to 15. That'd be more usable for uh, us analog guys, right? Uh, but anyway, um, it's nice having a third output, I guess. Uh, this guy here, it's a USB, so that's maybe more usable. So you can run your, uh, you know, your current probes or diff probes off that thing. Well, okay, so I was thinking, man, this thing's right around a hundred bucks on sale for I think just under a hundred bucks on Amazon. It's usually on sale. And I thought, man, that would be cool if they would come out with the dual tracking. They haven't yet, but you know what's maybe the second best thing? <laughs> the second one. So you know what? We're going to make a poor man's tracking generator. I'll be the tracker. Let's see if it works, okay? I'll hook it up. We'll be right back. Well, just in case you want to see it unboxed, I thought maybe... A May as well videotape this because I'm going to make this video pretty short so we won't waste a lot of time with, uh, you know, other stuff right now. All right. Oh, man. Pretty stiff box. Okay. It does come with a nice user manual. It's not super thick or anything like that, but it's written well and it's diagrammed well. And I did, like I said, I did do a review on this before. Power cord for U.S., and uh, kind of forgot it came with test leads. That's kind of interesting, huh? <laughs> yeah, I kind of forgot it came with these. These are actually pretty decent test leads. Uh, and yeah, and then it comes with these banana to alligator. You know, this cable, I thought, man, I don't know about 10 amps on this, but I actually ran 10 amps. It does heat up, so it's not ideal, but yeah, that's about the one kind of thing that it would have been nice to have a little higher gauge wire in there, but it does work. All right, so you can see how it packaged. I guess that's what I wanted to show is how well they packaged this thing. I guess I, it was good I showed this because I kind of forgot it came with those test leads, but yeah. Should look just like that one. All right. Uh, 
And you know what? These things are super lightweight because they are a switching power supply. And listen to this. I hear my other fan in the lab going, but this guy here, no fan running right now. Once it starts putting out some current for a while and it starts to heat up, then that fan kicks on. But I like that, that I can turn it on and not have the fan going. All right, here we go. Power supply number two. Man, it's got such a shiny display. All right, I'm gonna hook it up and uh, the back side of it in case you haven't seen the other video, just the IEC it has the fuse on the back, like say the fan. And I, I showed the insides of this and everything last time around. It's a pretty nice power supply. I've been happy with it. I've been using it on the bench here. And I was trying to do another video today on a, a Class D amplifier, but I've always been limited to this uh, wattage. About 60 volts total I can put out of that. A little bit more uh, at 3 amps, so less than 200 watts. And some of these amplifiers are 400 watts I've been trying to power up. So now I have 300 and 300 at 600 watts. <laughs> I should be able to do it now. You know, it would be nice if these went up to 40. There's so many power supplies that they, they're, you know, rated for around 20 to 30 volts out, 32 volts, and you know two to three amps I mean that seems so common I think there's a safety thing there uh, there's a cost thing but yeah I like this let's get another one hooked up and see how it works okay so I thought we could do a test real quick uh, I haven't even hit the power switch yet so let's go ahead and do that I am going to turn the current all the way down for right now well see the red light goes on when you turn the fine down I'll turn the fine all the way up. Yeah, it's still on. You have to turn the current up a little bit. And, or the light just goes up. Whoa, sparky, sparky. Okay, so uh, it's current limiting. And I've got, oh, you know what? The voltage was actually maxed out. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, 32 volts. Wow, okay. I don't like to do that sparky sparky too much. It kind of leaves that flashing marks on your thing, but yeah, a couple times won't hurt, I guess. All right, so uh, 4.5 amps. It's current limited, protects itself up to uh, 10 amps. It does tell me it's burning 1.5 watts, 154, because there's a little bit of voltage across the, uh, the wire, I guess. So it's got 10 amps going through it, and I don't feel this thing getting hot yet, but it will in a little bit. And so it's kind of like the wire they gave us. You know, similar gauge size. Here, I'll turn the voltage down so we don't get the arc, arcy sparky thing. And uh, what I did last time is when I plugged this in, Oops. They do fit snug. The banana jacks. The banana terminals here are pretty snug terminals. And they're made out of brass, I think. I almost thought it was copper because it seemed pretty soft, but, uh, you know, it's probably brass. But uh, they they seem like they're nice. They, they, they fit snug. But, um, yeah, so I got 10 amps going through this wire right now. And when I put my thermal camera on it, the thermal camera actually sees right through the rubber. It sees the heat. And so you can see the copper inside getting hot, but I mean, it's starting to get warm. Yeah, so anyway, these, uh, and look, now I burned 7.2 watts in this cable. And I do start to feel a little warmth now, but so seven watts in this cable that's about a meter long, probably three feet long, probably. Yeah, it's starting to get warm. So uh, we could probably calculate the resistance all that kind of stuff, what there is in this wire. So, you know, when you're doing 10 amps, you probably want to get a little higher gauge wire. We got 0.7 volt drop across the wire, across the cable, so 10 amps. You know, so there you go. Ohm's Lab, we can calculate all that stuff. So, okay, I'll go ahead and uh, pull this out. 
And now let's go ahead and hook this thing up and see if it works as, you know, a tracking power supply. I do notice from here that the display here isn't quite as bright as this one. This one seems brighter. I almost like it, this little bit of just not quite as bright. I think I could go on the board inside and, and probably uh, tweak that. But, all right, so let's, I'm gonna wire it up and then we'll test it out, okay? All right, so I've got it hooked up. What I've got is my red lead. This is my red power supply, or my plus, <laughs> my red. It's my plus power supply with red lead. And this is my minus power supply with my negative lead. And the green with this black wire in between, it comes off the negative terminal, comes down here to the positive terminal of this one. So it's just like two batteries stacked on top. This is the top battery and the bottom battery. And so this is my negative voltage. And the common is the plus to minus, right? And that's the green wire. So that's wired right in here. So I got the two resistors stacked, four ohm resistors, 200 watt each stacked on top of each other, the red to green, and then green to black. So red to green, and then green to black, okay? So I guess I should have used a green wire here just so it would be all green. But anyway, so this is my red, or my plus power supply, going with this meter, and you can, here, I'll just turn it up a little bit so we can, I'm gonna max out the current on both of them. They already are. Okay, so you can see one volt here, 107, 107. And 0.94 minus 0.94. Yeah, the meters here are fairly accurate too. And by the way, just a little note on this, you know, working in aerospace, military, uh, commercial, wherever I've worked, some people will actually send out power supplies for calibration sometimes we don't i prefer not to because i don't like to have power supplies lost in calibration and calibration isn't really calibrating adjusting all they do is they make sure it meets spec it's kind of a way to see if it's going bad or whatever but you know what i can do that too in the lab so often you use meters that are calibrated and the and you go by the meters not not what's on the power supply Anyway, just throwing that out there, just to give you some information about the industry and how I've seen it done a uh, number of companies I worked at, okay? Four ohm, 200 watts each. So uh, here, I'm just gonna, now, if I was gonna do this with the, when I do this, we'll do this in another video. Right now, I'm just showing you a quick video of how this works. But, you know, you just sit here and, adjust each one up and you can see like if I'm up a little bit higher on this one 9.8 okay my plus power supply is a little higher bring up this one and so some products you know power, power amplifiers whatever will want these voltages to be pretty close to each other so you know you want to sit there if I was at a bench I'd be bringing them both up nice and level kind of watching them both at the same time but yeah, just kind of staying out of the camera's way, so I'm kind of doing it this way, uh, bringing them, each one up. But yeah, you can kind of see, you know, one's up 25, this one's minus 20, minus 20.5, minus 20.1. This one says 25.25, that one's 25.53. Now the voltage over here is probably going to be a little bit lower because we're putting a little bit of current out. I got 5.11 amps and 6.24 amps. So let's get this one to catch up. Okay, so we're almost maxed out there and we are maxed out. Okay, so four ohms at 30, about 32 volts. I'm dropping a little bit of voltage over here at my leads to my resistors and these guys are gonna start getting hot. But there you go. I think you kind of see how it works. The one drawback of doing it this way, guys, would be that if if there was a problem on one of the outputs, uh, if it shorted or something, the one power supply will react to that. Well, they're both going to be limited to how much current you limit it to, right? And 
So let's say right now, if I knew my load was taken close to eight amps and I didn't want to go to up to 10 amps, well, I could drop this down to right where it starts to affect the voltage. Right there, see the constant current light go on? Then I bring it up until that red light goes off and I could just leave it right there. Same thing on this one. Okay, now I know that if there's a problem, the current goes up just a little bit higher than where it is right now, it'll, you know, go into constant current limit, okay? But you know what? For 200 bucks, I got a 600 watt power supply. <laughs> uh, I think that's pretty cool. And, oh, and I don't know if I mentioned, but Kai Weeks gave me this power supply too. They're so, they're so nice, easy to work with. They've been asking me to review some uh, meters. You've seen some meter reviews lately with Kai Wheats, And I just thought I'd ask them if I could review this setup. And they're like, sure. <laughs> so uh, now, hey, I just heard the fan go on. I don't know if they both turned on or just one. And you know what? The fans in these aren't loud they're not as loud as the fans in these you can hear that fan probably right and I turn it off and actually I think the fan turned off yeah I think it went on for a moment it turned right back off so the green lights are on saying they're constant voltage and that's what we want we set the voltage we want the power okay I think the fan just kicked on again so it just turns on cools it off turns off that is such a nice setup. I don't know why expensive power supplies aren't all set up that way. All right, well guys, uh, I was kind of afraid to touch these, but they're gonna be too hot for me to touch pretty soon. Yeah, they're getting, once they start getting hot, it's like the heat just accelerates. And there we go. I think I just tripped a breaker. <laughs> I got a little bit too much power running in here. So that was fun. Uh, hope you liked it. I think that's a suggestion that the video is over. Hey, I want to thank uh, Patreons for all the support and all you guys for watching videos supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. All the comments and everything. Uh, keep it coming. And we just had Thanksgiving yesterday. And I was hoping to get a video out. And just, yeah. Anyway. Uh, for those in the U.S. or anybody that celebrates Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving a day late. And, well, it'll be two days late by the time you see this, I guess. And for those others, happy weekend coming up. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that was kind of funny. I've had that happen a couple times. I've got a lot of stuff powered up in here. And uh, I've got some stuff over there powered up as well. But... I guess, uh, here, should I set the, reset the breaker just to show you that everything's okay? Let's do that. Yeah, I've got a lot of lights running off this thing too, by the way. Yeah, some of the stuff hasn't repowered up. The signalant hasn't turned back on. It's got a soft switch. Uh, but everything with hard switches powered back up, like the GW and all this stuff. Uh, you know what it was? is a power strip that all this stuff is plugged into back here. And this guy right here, I'm going to turn this off. Um, these are really old power supplies, and I think they're leaky. And I think uh, the GF, uh, I, I, I think there's a little bit too much leakage current. This guy right here has a problem. We're going to troubleshoot that one day and fix it, okay? One side's not working right now. But I think this guy needs to have some leaky capacitors replaced as well. So, aluminum electrolytics, you got to love them, right? Okay, guys. Hey, thanks for watching, and <laughs> that was exciting, huh? Okay, I'll see you next time. I'm going to turn off some of these lights. <laughs>